Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 265 of the All Dolphins podcast on this Friday. Yes, I'm going to say I know you hate when I say the date, uh, Omar. Yeah, people are going to be listening to this all weekend. You're dated it Friday. It just, just give it because, episode 265. Because then if things happen that would make our opinions seem ridiculous in the interim from the time we tape to the time people actually listen to it, then they would know the reason. So today, as we're taping, it's Friday. April 12th, 2024, when we're hoping people keep checking it out, May 17th, 2024. Yeah, listen, um, we appreciate everybody. The numbers are lean. We're okay with that. No, we're not. We're lying. Watch the damn podcast, people. Like, we're this too how negative is a problem. Huh? We're too negative is a problem. We're turning people off with that. And we're yes. here to tell you, the Dolphins, I'm positive, this is not, I'm positive, the Dolphins have made the, have had a winning record each of the last four years. They made the playoffs the last two years. They are absolutely going to be in the mix when the 2024 season begins. It's not like they're going to be, I don't know, the Tennessee Titans or Chicago Bears, even though even if they get Caleb Williams, that's going to be a reason for excitement. But they're not contending in 2024. The Dolphins absolutely could contend. Um no, no, that's right. not fair. That's not fair. Don't do that to Chicago. Look at Houston. Did we think Houston was going to be contending? Did we think they were going to be a playoff team last year? No. You never know. That's fair. That's a good point. Okay. What's and, another? What's now, another see, Stroud, that dude is a dude. I, I will say this, um, and I would like to apologize to you, sir, because I don't know what led me. It was it it was something. I don't know. The NFL Network was like showing his games. They were like, he ran rookie of the year. And the NFL showed like his games for an entire week. So they just showed his games. And I got locked in on watching it. And the more I watched it, the more I was like, damn, this dude is elite. Mm -hmm. Like year one, he might be a top 10 quarterback right now. It wasn't just like fabricated numbers or playing bad defenses. Not a word from you. Um, it was just excellent quarterback play. And I was like, sim simplified offense because he was a rookie and he was young. But, bro, he was a baller. And I was like, wow, surprising. And, and I saw that. I saw you had found a new gain of respect for him on Twitter X. Uh, where I don't talk to you enough, so you got to hear from me on Twitter. That's what yeah. you're trying to say. Oh, I, I, I stalk you on, on, on X, see what you're coming up with. In and in fact, I saw your, your tweet or your reply to somebody about Off the Wall being a better album than Thriller. Uh, I don't remember all the tracks on Off the Wall. I, that's my favorite Michael Jackson song, the title track, Off the Wall. Um, you you got to go song for song on that one. And Off the Wall, oh, the production is, the production was... Um, Quincy Jones? Quincy yeah. Jones, but he did all their albums and they brought in a musician that was making i can't remember what it is i've seen the documentary it was making like that era of music of like disco music mm -hmm. but he made some very popular songs and he was like behind the scenes producing on off the wall but anyway go ahead let's continue no so so i saw that you had found the new uh, you gained newfound respect for stroud on twitter when you were talking about the top the elite quarterbacks in the nfl you did leave out jordan love who I, who I saw quite a bit. Well, okay, here's, the, here's my problem with your your reasoning is you're saying you want to see it more than one year. Well, CJ Stroud's only done it one year also. And Jordan Love never played. No, I want to see it for one year. Jordan Jordan Love only played well for half a year. But he, I mean, holy smokes. The last, the last like 11 games, I mean, holy smokes was he good. Um, anyway, and this, of course, this is the whole thing because of where does Tua fit into that category? And it brings us. It's going to bring us to part of our conversation today, which are Teron Armstead's comments related to Tua and Drew Brees as somebody who played with both. First, we do the history lesson. I know some of you are like, oh, man, I'm glad it's coming. Others are like, oh, man. Anyway, they, They're like, they thought we forgot. <laughs> yeah. it, we it, it, it's, truly, it's truly very interesting how polarizing that is. Some people absolutely love it. Some people absolutely hate it. It's just like both of us. There you go. I mean, some people absolutely hate you and some people will absolutely love me. Is that what you're saying? That's what exactly what I was saying. But go ahead. Carry on. Okay. Okay. Um, so 65 is the episode number. Dolphins have picked a player. Well, first of all, if we're going to go with the full number, Dolphins have never made a 265th pick 
in the draft. And yes, it used to go up that high. It doesn't anymore because now there's seven rounds. And I think the last one's maybe 254. Some maybe I'm wrong. But they they've selected a player 65th overall three times. Uh Ronnie Lee, offensive lineman tight end from Baylor. It's an interesting combination. One of those guys who played both. George Little, defensive tackle from Iowa was at E5. And the last one and the best of the 65th overall selections was Tim Ruddy, center from Notre Dame, which was part of Don Shula's final draft. No, next to final draft. It was 1994. Made a Pro Bowl. Very solid center. This was a position the Dolphins actually have had good success at center, starting with Jim Langer. They had Dwight Stevenson, who was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, even Je Jeff Ulenick as a four-year starter also was very good. Mike Pouncey was very good. Um you going to just skip over uh, Samson Satelli? Yeah. Really just going to ignore him like he – hey, they brought him back here and he ended up being a starter second time, so don't disrespect him. It's true, but I forgot Jim Langer was only in the Hall of Fame, so shame on me. Yeah. So, anyway, that's the history lesson. Not a whole lot to it, but Tim Reddy was a very good player, very, very smart, went to Notre Dame. I always remember an exchange where <sighs> – I've told this story before. It was an ESPN reporter at the time out of West Palm Beach. I want to know. No, he went to ESPN. He was a reporter. West Palm Beach TV station, Tim Ruddy in a in a group setting, used the word schematic. And the guy looked at Tim Ruddy, like belittling him, like saying, not even a word. And Tim Ruddy, who was basically a, a rocket scientist or something along those lines, looked at him like, what is the hell is wrong with you? And we all kind of also looked at him like, what the hell is wrong with you? Anyway, but Tim Hardy, very good player, part of Don Shula's last team. So, speaking of good offensive linemen, Teron Arm said doing the rounds this week was on the NFL Network. You know why he's doing the rounds. Because uh, he's in L.A. Because he's in L.A. And I know you. I, we, we thought we saw him in that shot of oh, all the people involved. Thought. I know what, I know what Teron looks like. I that was him. Except it's a re the picture is like really it's almost a Bro, size. I, of you don't know how to zoom in on your phone, Omar. It's almost the size of the Allen Iverson statue in Philly that they just, they just unveiled. <laughs> hey, listen, this they apparently on their practice court they have a row of great legendary players, and all of the statues are that size. So oh, it's not like they're putting it in front. Yeah, I mean, before I mock them. I, I probably should have done my homework, even though I don't think that's satisfactory for Allen Iverson. Like, I'm sorry, Allen Iverson is the greatest player in your franchise history, and I don't care what people say about Morgan Moses Malone or or Charles Barkley or Dr. J. Who's better than Allen Iverson? Damn. Name him. Damn. Put a name on it. Probably Dr. J. Nah, Dr. J. Allen Iverson is greater than Dr. J, brother. Mm -mm. That's a see. This is a generational argument here. Commenters. Who's right? Who's wrong? Go ahead. Alan Iverson's the answer, baby. Dr. J, yes, he was a face of the franchise during the pre-Jordan era, but he was what? Maybe the fifth best player in the league at that time? Magic? My I believe, unless I'm mistaken, I believe he did win an MVP, though, uh, as did Ion Iverson, who won it once, maybe. Okay. And mind you, I was a big fan of Allen Everson that to me he had like maybe the biggest heart I've seen on a basketball court. I mean, that dude Al Iverson's legit six oh, yeah. foot 165 pounds. Is he even that tall? I mean, he, uh, yeah, he's that tall. Yeah. Right. I mean, he, yeah, no, no. I, big fan of his game, absolutely, but best player in Sixers history. Ooh, that's a little bit much. Oh, come on. All right. Oh, uh, anyway, okay, so. So you're still saying saying that Tehran was part of the uh, broadcast workshop? Yes, yes, he, uh, I, yes. I zoomed in. That, I know Tehran. I know what he looks yeah, I, like. I know what he looks like. Also, I did. I, like again, I couldn't blow it up on my phone big enough to see it. Oh, um, yeah. Tehran and Raheem Mostert are part of the yeah. NFL's media program where the NFL players are learning how to do the media. Why do you think he's made the rounds on like four shows this week? He's he's getting practice. He's getting his reps up. Okay, but, and, and, you gotta, also, and, and to do to do that, you got to tell stories. So Tehran's talking a lot of Tua, yeah. putting Tua's business out there on the streets. Um, all, all we yeah. need to do, all we need, oh, oh, Tehran, if you're gonna be a real media member, you got to tell us about the tattoo. You got to tell us the backstory of the off-season workout, the John Beck workout. You got, you got, you got to get the info, Tehran. If you now, he is telling stories, and he told basically a story of 
how he hooked up to and Drew Brees, and ultimately how Tua was fascinated by the fact that he's taller than Drew Brees. And he is taller than Drew Brees. No, he said they spent like 20 minutes talking about whatever, and then all Tua could say, like, T-Stead, I'm taller than him. I'm taller than him. That yeah, was- and they don't call him T-Stead. They call him T. I, I, I don't understand what this whole T-Stead. Yeah. That's what he, the man said. No, if you're going to talk about personal stuff he put out there, he put out there that Mike McDaniel cries a lot. Um, you didn't which, think Mike McDaniel cries a lot? No, I, no, no. I'm not. I'm not surprised, but in, in the least, because Mike Mike McDaniel fine. is a new age, like sensitive kind of guy, um, very like very personable and all that. But again, that was more personal than anything he said about Tua. Like the anecdote with Drew Brees. I mean, it's a great anecdote, but I don't know that it's putting Tua's stuff out there. He did have a lot of praise for Tua, and again. This is what you would expect a teammate to say about one of his teammates. You will not give recognition, ownership, praise, credit to the fact that Tehran said that he called Tariq out. And oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, that was good. No, he, I, he, I, even, I even Tariq has said he, you know, he wants to see Tua do that more. He wants to see Tua hold him more account, hold him and his teammates more accountable. I mean, everybody, and it, this is this is true, and this is something that's talked about publicly and privately. Tua is growing into the leader he has the potential to be, but he wasn't always that. And you know, I've always looked at it from the standpoint of when he got the team in two thousand and twenty. Not everybody was supportive of that. Not everybody was comfortable with it. And in fact, it pissed off a lot of their teammates because that was Ryan Fitzpatrick's team. And so it made it an uncomfortable situation for Tua. And I think it carried over during the whole Brian Flores era. Not everybody was always in support of Tua. And then comes Mike McDaniel. And then in the first year, Tariq flat out said like, hey, I I need you to be more of a leader. I need you to be Tua. You call us, you, like you tell us when to show up, where to show up, and it's our job to be there. You're the quarterback, and Tua has not. I don't think he's still there yet, but he's getting there. But here's there's a couple of things. Number one that come into play here is, again, the more and more you establish yourself as a player, the easier it comes. Number two, this is where culture comes comes into play. What's a, the Polynesian culture, unless I'm severely mistaken, is all about respecting your elders and, and deferring to others. It, it's not, not about ego. And this is a position kind of you have to be like a, the alpha of the, of the team. And Tua's personality is not that. So Tua basically has to, to talk himself into it, into that role. So you tell me Polynesians can't be leaders? Junior say I was a leader, bro. I think he was. I'm just saying, generally speaking, no, junior, yeah, correct. But generally speaking, and again, I'm not Polynesian, but I've been around like at NFL players who are Polynesian, and generally speaking, that's uh, there are more to us who are like very deferential than there are Junior Seau, who is a complete alpha. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think you have to be an alpha, alpha to be a quarter successful quarterback, though. Do you think that? Yeah, I mean Herbert's mm. definitely not an alpha, but he's not elite. I mean, he kind of sucks. All he's got is a big arm. You said he's elite. You said he's not elite. I said he's not elite. <laughs> it's I'm jo- I'm, no, <laughs> he's not, dude, he's not there yet. He's not there okay. yet. All right. um, yeah. But no, and 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 what's been lacking for him is correct. He's he hasn't shown he's an alpha. Again, he's like too nice a guy. Ryan Tannehill is too nice a guy. But you look at. You look at the guys who are unquestionably those guys. Um, Patrick Mahomes is a, definitely not. Tom Brady was a complete alpha. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, weird alpha, but an alpha nonetheless. Uh, yes, I said it. Weird, oh. weird, weird, weird puppy. Sorry. Uh, Russell Wilson wasn't an alpha, but it, it, he's a champion. He's a Hall of Famer. Oh, no, correct. Um, He's a, he's another he's another unique case. He's he's kind of weird, not in the same way as Rogers, but there's just there's like he's corporate. Yeah. He's corporate. Russell's corporate. Is that fair? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Russell Wilson Inc. I don't know. 
Um, but no, absolutely. No, I love that story. And that wasn't when I was talking about my thing about teammates praising teammates. It's like that wasn't necessary. When they talk about like he's great, he's coming. All that, that's what I'm talking about. That, that particular anecdote of two walk calling out Tyreek Hill, line, yo, line up in the right spot. No, that was great. Uh, and that shows growth. And Armstead, as he said, that's part of what's got me so excited. He also mentioned playing for Mike McDaniel, who he absolutely loves. Uh, and he talked about learning a different technique under Mike McDaniel. Yes, he, yes, he did. Yes, I know. I, I heard it. I, I, I heard it. I didn't necessarily buy it. I wasn't purchasing that one. You, you weren't. You weren't but it wasn't about like learning a new scheme. It was about like what he was being taught. He was being taught differently than he was taught. Yeah. Was, I mean, according yeah. to Tur Turan. Yes. And I get it. I understand it. I don't necessarily know if I buy it. Um, I think Tehran, and I've watched Tehran very closely when he was a free agent. Shh, that, that like, I, I was very impressed with his work there when he was with New Orleans. I watched him here. Um, I know the healthy Tehran versus the trying to make it through the game Tehran. Um, I, I really don't necessarily know if I'm seeing different technique changes. You know, maybe he can. I would love for him to break it down. That we should we should get him on the All Dolphins podcast for uh, since he's doing his media run. Yeah, really, you can't say no to us after saying. I mean, after saying it, yes to Rich Eisen and the NFL Network, he's got to say yes to us. Mike Golick and his son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's, he's definitely got it. Next next up is the All Dolphins podcast for us. Yes. Oh, I I agree. There's no question. It would be rude of him not to do it, and we'll call him out on it. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll make him look bad. So anyway, though, he basically had a quote. I wrote a story about that on si.com slash NFL slash Dolphins. The, the quote he used, I was the money quote, was that he's standing up to the comparison to Drew Brees. Um, yeah. Um, and I, I, I personally have always used the comparison to Drew Brees. Um, the accuracy, the size – the timing, the precision passing. Um, that's probably the closest comparison that you can make to Tua. Um, Therese only won one championship in an ideal world. Hopefully Tua can get himself to a Super Bowl. But yeah, I, I you know, at this point, based on what Tua has shown, that's the easiest and safest comparison. Is it lazy comparison? No. Um, but some people, I'm not going to say who they are, will probably turn their nose up at that comparison because Drew Brees is a Hall of Famer, and then it sort of hints that Tua can be a Hall of Famer. Um, and, you know, I don't know if he can or if he can't, but the accuracy, the timing, the size, um, offensive efficiency that he's shown for the last two years, that's Drew Brees. If you're this generation's version of Drew Brees, there's no shame in it. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, except, but yeah, in playing style, yes, I absolutely see it. He needs again, but he needs to to get there. And it's interesting because if you look back at Drew Brees' career, after he was a second round pick in tw in 2001, and we should know this because the Dolphins messed that up. They should have picked with badly, Jamar Fletcher. Uh, after his third season. The Chargers decided they need to go in a different direction. I don't know why you're rolling your eyes. The Chargers decided yeah. they need to go in a different direction. They they, took... they drafted and developed uh, Philip Rivers. No, you're wrong. They drafted Eli Manning. Then they traded Eli Manning to the Giants because he didn't want to play in San Diego for Philip Rivers. It was the fourth overall pick that year. Uh, and then they and they developed him. Bruce played 2004, 2005 was a quarterback. Still in 2004, they made the playoffs. 2005, they didn't. He blew out his left shoulder in the season finale, heading into free agency, and then failed the Dolphin physical. Uh, but my point is that he really didn't quite take off until he got to New Orleans, which was later down in his career. Year five. Was, you know, this just so happens to be the same year that two is entering right now in the NFL. Correct. And if that year happens, the Dolphins five. should reward Tua with a nice, fat, juicy contract extension next offseason if that happens. Hey, get ahead of the market right now. Oh, it was actually, it was actually, you can't, this is where, and then you get ahead of the market and that progression does not occur. And now you made a blunder and you've Ryan Tannehill your team for, for the second time. No matter uh, what, you're going to Ryan Tannehill your team. So stop it. 
What does that mean? You're going to make a commitment to him. You're not dating. You've, you're ready to propose. And you're going to plan a wedding. I, we're, so. we're saying, I know, I know that we're talking about what they should. And actually, it's actually very interesting. Because Drew Brees, again, looking back, Made the made the pro made the Pro Bowl for the first time in his fourth season, just like Tua. After they they got Philip Rivers, mm -hmm. the then, year they got Philip Rivers, and then the next year they went to New Orleans. No, I mean next year he, he went to New Orleans. One more, no, he played one more year, two thousand five, two thousand six. He went to New Orleans. You should know this. Oh, because so he was a first round pick. pick. Okay, my bad. He had five years. Okay, one, two, three, four. No, he played five years with the Chargers. Went to the Saints his first year with the Saints. He was named an All Pro along with, Pro mm -hmm. Bowl, which is different. So, um, yeah, Poupard respects All Pros. He does not respect Pro Bowl. Just for, for those who are new to the All Dolphins podcast, especially now. If, well, number one, number one. I think we've all seen how players vote on those things. That's number one. Number two. The fans they vote. have not seen it. We have seen it. Yes. The fans with all the respect vote with their heart. A and B without so they're gonna vote for the players on their team. Sometimes I haven't seen a whole lot of other players from other teams. So the fan vote is kind of um of course the argument could be made that the all pro teams are based on 50 voters. And so who's to say that those yes, that's what yeah, yeah you're right. So right. who's to say those 50 voters really are are the end all be all when it comes to determining players? To me, it should be. I mean, you cover a team on a full time basis, you should have a vote, but they don't do that. They do. They select 50. It's kind of a weird variety of people: some radio, some broadcasters, some former journalists, some big guys, some columnists. Uh, oh man, why don't you get into the Hall of Fame voting while you're at it? <laughs> kind of the same deal. Yeah. All yeah, right. I, yeah, I don't want to go into the Hall of Fame voting because there is, yeah, yeah. there's certain things there that, that don't sit right with me, but that's. That is correct, sir. Different discussion for a different day. So, Teron talked about McDaniel, as we said. We got to die and lose a Hall of Fame vote. Anyway, let's. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 not touching that one. Not going there. Not going there. Uh, what else they don't do we have, have jobs in journalism anymore. But anyway, okay, carry right. on. I said they don't even have jobs in journalism anymore. Let's carry on. Yeah, well, what else? I'm look, trying to look at what else was on our agenda here. Um, to us, uh, uh, the, 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 the luau, the luau, the luau. The luau. Go ahead. What do you want to say about the luau? Um, what? What? Oh, this is where I have a late from my honeymoon. I should have. I should have brought it down. I yeah. Been. What part of Hawaii did you go to? We went uh, split our time from, on the island of Oahu and Maui. Okay, Oahu and Maui. So how'd you get to the other island? Very carefully. <laughs> I, always, I always do this. Um, I think bunny hopper was that what it's called? Did you land on the water or not? No, I don't. I don't, dude. That was 19 years ago. I don't. I don't recall. Um, I do recall that Maui was completely spectacular. So, so I should go to Maui because Hawaii is on my list of places to go. Maui is breathtaking. Okay, all right. I should, I should probably ask Tua and get recommendations. He probably has a lot of connections, but you know, as long as you don't call him a Hawaiian, you gotta call him Polynesian. <sighs> yeah, yeah. Um, if you don't know about that, it's Tua. Will look it up on YouTube. Tua educates you. Do not call him Hawaiian. He is not Hawaiian. Um, he is Polynesian. Okay. Luau, uh, and and then he sang Jama sang J Jamaican songs. Yeah, last night at the Luau, or at least the, the one at Bob Marley. <laughs> Bob, Bob Marley songs, Three Little Birds. Yes, um, which I use to tease an si dot com slash dolphin <laughs> slash dolphin yeah. si dot com NFL dolphin slash dolphins story. Um, I promise you, people were were working on the name. Um, we'll figure you why don't you comment what it should be called uh Poopard's like I'm very uncomfortable right now um too soon there might not be a choice in the matter too soon yes I'm gonna drop little hints here and there too soon yes okay um anyway every little thing uh, no, yeah, right. yes don't worry about a thing and 
I used it as the lead for uh, my story about Tua and his comments and his contract and the fact Tua said, which I found very interesting. He said, Miami is home. We will be raising our kids here even when we're done. You know, we, this is this is home for us. This is where we're going to be raising our kids. Um, and that definitely means, I mean, it kind of hurts your negotiating point when you say that. Like, uh, I mean. Would he be the first player? Would, would would he be the first player to live in South Florida and play for another team? If it if it no, be? he he wouldn't be. Okay. But I always hate when or I dislike when players have to. It's it's always uncomfortable when you have to move your family and then your kids are of school age and then your your wife and your kids stay behind and they come visit you for games and you're not living with your family. That sucks. Who doesn't want to live with their family other than people who are divorced? Um, <laughs> or getting a divorce. Okay. Uh, so let's 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 um let's let's move on. Um, it's 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 really a just you're hurting your leverage here. You're saying you're putting on, you're putting on your agent hat right now, aren't you? Yeah, man. You don't say that. You 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 say I'm ready to move on. I'm I'm willing to move on. Like because. Here's the thing, and I'm going to ask you this question, and I want you to take off your Alan Poupart hat and just look at it from, yeah, there you go. Just look at it from a regular businessman standpoint. What has taken you so long to get this deal done? Other than the fact that maybe you don't want to get this deal done. But here's the thing. Do you honestly think the Dolphins are going to reduce their amount by even a dollar just because Tua says we love South Florida, it's our home? No, it's, it's going to motivate me to – I already know he wants to stay here. He knows the advantages to staying here. Clearly, he's not going to try to learn a new offense. Um, uh, he's This is the first time ever in his career he's been in an offense for a second season. He'd definitely like to do it for a third. Uh, Mike McDaniel, he's, he's, co he's played for Brian Flores and Mike McDaniel. There's a huge difference there, and he knows the value of playing for Mike McDaniel. Um, Tax wise, weather wise, this is probably the one place that is weather wise like his homeland. Um, so clearly, he's fallen in love with that, and all of his family members have already moved down here. So, you know, it certainly doesn't help you from a negotiating and leverage standpoint. Yeah, un until the money comes in. And as I've said, and I am a Tua fan. If and I don't want to hear a single word from you on this when I when I when I do acknowledge it and say it when you open Tua up let's say he just hits the unrestricted free agent market just you just said nah we're not gonna tag him we're gonna Christian Wilkins him we're gonna see what the market bears like there's only a select few teams that are gonna be bidding on Tua primarily because let's be real about it with the arm he is a dome quarterback. Not a word. Or, Not or a word. A, or a southern quarterback. Dolphins don't have a dome. Yes. Or or I mean, yeah. Or or a southern quarterback. Or a warm weather quarterback. Tampa or Bay. Warm, yes. So you're you're like talking about eight of thirty-two teams, and some of those eight teams have quarterbacks. Like so. So do you have to overpay? And I think that that's the issue. And I, and I know our colleague, Chris Perkins with the Sun Sentinel, wrote a very column, very Alan Poupard-esque column. Wow. Why, why, do you have to, why do I have to catch a stray here? It's this column, not mine. It, 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 well, you probably applauded it. <laughs> did you or did you not applaud it? You gave it some hearts. Yes, I you did not. That's yes, a joke. Yes, I did not. And and I and I have written the I have written a similar column. You don't have to pay Tua. You've made it through free agency without needing Tua. You're gonna get 18 and a half million dollars in cap space back. You're probably gonna have to spend five of that on your rookie class. You your 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 books are right now in position to be pretty good considering you don't owe nobody a tremendous amount of guaranteed money in 2025. You can do a full scale reset if you want. You don't have to pay Tua right this very minute. And as I wrote in in the in the in the in the story, when you put Tua's 
contract together when you put the fifth year option along with the franchise tag price, which we've we've kind of got a ballpark of what the franchise tag price is. Um, you're going to be paying to a $65.6 million over the next two years, as opposed to, let's just say you say to Miami, hey, give us the Justin Herbert deal. That's $133.7 million in guaranteed money for three years. If I'm paying you 65 for two, why would I pay you 133 for three? Do, do, do you follow me? No, I agree with you. Now, I'm not saying that they shouldn't sign them to a multi-year deal because it would be wise to before Dak Prescott gets his money and Trevor Lawrence gets his money and maybe Jordan Love gets his money and, you know, all these other quarterbacks. And I have already said and consistently stand on this. I'm at $45 million a year. Kirk Cousins' price value, price dollar value, is what I would give to him for – very similar reasons. You are a $45 million a year quarterback. If you change and elevate yourself to become a $50 million a year quarterback, we'll clearly alter the contract because we're always going to need to restructure your contract to create more cap space in the future. After the first two years, we're going to be constantly restructuring it if you're actually good. I'm sorry, did you say if you're actually good? It, and so, okay, so again, to me, if you have to ask the question, if you're actually good, then there's zero, zero reason to tie yourself and let him again go through that scenario you just had. Fifth year option next year. Hold on. You're a liar because you're a liar. You know why you're a liar? You know what the reason is? What are my options? Okay. What are my options? become available every year on the free agent market. And then you're also assuming that you can you can you can never work up some kind of trade to, to move up in the draft. Come on. That so you could have you could have had you could have had Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, and Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Cousins this year, and there's six quarterbacks in the draft who have very intriguing. Players. And two is better than all of those individuals. Says who? Says me. Oh, two, well, so, there, well, there you go. A duh. Well, I mean, there you go. Again, okay. there is zero. I'm gonna. I said what I said, and I'm gonna say it again. There is zero reason. To run, number one, and, and starting with the fact that if you offer two or 45 million, his representatives are going to be like, talk to the hand. Am I right? Okay. And I will talk okay. to the hand and you'll play in your fifth year option. Okay. That's fine. But, and, and again, to me, it, that makes more sense. Skip that step. And again, to me, the whole thing is. That's disrespectful. I am not at the point if I'm running the Miami Dolphins where I want to tie myself in the two or for three more years. Or, or I'm going to take a nasty cap hit when I have the option of fifth year option in 2024 and franchise tag in 2025. Or if he completely balls out in 2024, then then he gets the long term contract extension next off season. What's the hurry? There is none, except for the fact that he wants to be taken care of and he wants to be make Miami his home and he wants his 130 to 140 million dollars in guaranteed money committed to him. Good for him. I want to be taken care of. Is that that anybody else's problem but mine? I mean, every and uh, by the way, is that really a newsflash? Every player on the team wants to be taken care of. And this Christian is the exact Walker's reason. This is the exact reason why he should not be participating when they start start doing field work. Because you're not going to be motivated as an organization to do right by me. Why should I do right by you? But you know. I, I take a very hard business stance when it's time to do business things. And unfortunately, Tua is not going to do that. Because you're a player advocate. Am I right or am I right? I, I, I don't view myself as a player advocate. I'm going to view myself as a person who's about right and wrong. There you go. And He's under contract. Where does it say that you have to take care of your of your – and he's under contract, and in that contract, it does not stipulate that I have to participate in an off-season program. Absolutely fair. And sure. when is the time to make business moves and hardline stances? It's now. He's not going to do it, but that doesn't mean that he shouldn't. Christian Wilkins did it. Okay, but now here's here's the problem with your with your approach. In the unlikely event, first of all, to me, I don't think he. Every player could skip the offseason. First of all, Dolphins have were allowed to have 10 OTAs. Mike McDaniel's like, 
Let's just do six instead. So obviously you're looking at somebody who doesn't think it's that important. And it really right. it is. It's not. Um, Correct. So if we're going to really think that it's going to affect his performance. Uh, and if it does, who's going to wind up paying the cost eventually? He the is. Dolphins as a team and to himself because it's going to cost him money. So it's a dangerous game that you can play there from the player standpoint while understanding. And this is where I, I go back to the original point. If the Dolphins are truly as committed to tour as they keep publicly saying, take care of the dude and do it now. Coming from you? Yes. You say that? I said if the Dolphins are as committed internally as they are. You know they are. You know they are. I, uh, do I Come Do on. I know? Yeah, you do. They do love I know? him. You, they love him. You know they do. Mike McDaniel. They keep, they keep, well, Marvin Allen. Hold on. Here's the thing. It's Mike McDaniel is a very, very smart guy. Mike McDaniel also – before he took this job is like, let me work with the dude. I'm going to, I'm going to unleash him and then create. And he's also confident enough in his smarts, in his ability to design that I could tell you, Mike McDaniel, if you remember Adam Gase kept telling us, watch Tannehill. I'm going to, I'm going to unleash the Tannehill, the Tannehillism. You falling asleep on me, Omar. Um, so, and Mike McDaniel is the same way. Mike McDaniel probably would could take any quarterback you would give him and say, "Do oh, can he?" Because we haven't seen it. We've seen him mentor one quarterback. I, I hate that 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 whole. Oh, Mike McDaniel could take any quarterback and turn him into a great quarterback. Hmm. Where do you, where have you seen but that? I think he has that. He has that belief. So this we is didn't what, see him take Tyler, Skyler Thompson to turn him into a great quarterback. I said it. Seventh round pick. So was Brock Purdy, who was drafted after Skyler Thompson. Aber, complete aberration on a, again on a stack team, and it's. It happens. How much is it Purdy and how much is it the offense? This was the old the old going going around. And I and I think Purdy's pretty actually pretty good, but he also operates in a very favorable offense. Jimmy Garoppolo, Jared Goff also succeeded very well. Anything else we need to discuss before we No, the draft is two weeks us. away. Um we've got a lot of draft work to do. We'll have some more draft guests on. Um, still studying prospects. I'm, I'm learning my positions. I'm still watching film of, of defensive tackle. Um, everybody keeps loving this UCLA pass rusher, so that means he's definitely not going to be there um, when you're selecting at 21. See, that's negative. That, see, that this is what the, the fans are complaining about. That's overly negative. I'm going to say he's going to be there. There you go. So there. I'm I Mr. Positivity. Mean, yes, and I'm Mr. Negativity. You know where time it is. Um on that note, we're out. We will see you. Uh, if nothing happens significant over the weekend, we will see you on Monday. Be safe. Be smart. Um, stay out of trouble. Appreciate you guys.